Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're doing well this Sunday evening. I know I'm doing great because today we have a very special episode. Today is part two of the three things I've learned in the industry, the industry of passion, entertainment, and music. We have two individuals that are just stellar. I mean, stellar with their accomplishments, the things that they have done. The first individual is a beautiful young lady all the way from Chicago, the Windy City. She's a singer, a producer. She's also an entrepreneur, songwriter, dancer. She's toured in, uh, with Julio Iglesias. She's performed all over the world. And she stopped by the Sherrard Show to impart some of her wisdom this Sunday evening. Mrs. Wendy uh, Farrell, how are you, young lady? I'm doing fine. How are you? It's for some reason, I think purple is your favorite color. Is that correct? I like purple hair. <laughs> Her background is so, it's purple. You look lovely. Welcome to the Sherrard Show. And then we have a gentleman. This gentleman is a masterful drummer. He's performed with people all over the world, such as Lenny Kravis, Bobby Brown, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, as well as a new addition, Jody Watley, Philip Bailey uh, of Earth, Wind and & Fire, and the list goes on. And also he has two books. He has one book he's written called Soar, The Nine Ways to Unlock Your Limitless Potential. And then he has a book that's very inter interesting called The Big Gig. The reason why this is so interesting is because it's been endorsed by Quincy Jones. Quincy yeah. Jones himself has read it and he's personally endorsed the book. And this man is named rightfully so Zorro because he can cut you up. And he's got by the Sugar So we really appreciate you. How are you doing this evening, sir? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm just happy to be with you guys. And I was almost going to wear a purple scarf, Wendy. I was just, <laughs> I was literally, I have all kinds of different colored scarves and I had like a purple lavender one. And I was thinking it goes good with black. I should have put it on. I was like, my first instinct was to wear that one. And I'm like, dang, I didn't. Now, you know, you got to follow your first mind. I, I didn't <laughs> listen to that voice. You know, that voice that God tells you. <laughs> well, you're still cleaning right. in a board of health, though, Zora. You're still oh, you're looking good. We appreciate that. <laughs> um, Don't worry about it. <laughs> amen. The Sherrard Show is brought to you by Eboat. Eboat, ladies and gentlemen, the premier weight loss formula, all natural. You can drop some 75 to 100 pounds in just 90 days. Eboat, go to www.eboat.com. You can do it the healthy way without being on a crash diet. And then it's also brought to you by Stephanie Angelini's Life Lesson CD. This CD is all about teaching you life lessons. She has a number one hit that's called Cause of You. You want to definitely check out her music at stephanieangelini.com. You know, this weekend has been a weekend of stars. Um, I was privileged to have Mr. Reginald Dozier from uh, Holland and Dozier on the show yesterday, as well as having Mr. Victor Orlando stop by the show. And now the, the party keeps rolling because of these two special guests we have on the show. Now, Wendy, I'm going to start with you. First, welcome to the show. Wendy, tell us a little bit about how you got started in your career. Uh -huh. Well, I want to tell you um, the three things that uh, the one thing, because it's going to lead into how I got started. The one thing that I learned about from being in the music industry, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I started singing at the age of two and by the age of three, I was singing in public, right? And I came from a family of nine and it was, um, nobody else was doing music but me. So it was a kind of lonely thing growing up because I thought everybody should be singing and they thought I should be shutting up sometimes. So it was always like, damn, she's still singing. Oh, she never shuts up. But it was just, it was so natural. I didn't know not to sing. And um, so you would say, well, as a kid, where would you find places to sing? And so I was singing at school. I was singing at church. I was singing on the broadcast. I was singing um, at um, funerals. I mean, I was singing everywhere as a, as a kid, you know, like 11, 12, I was doing all that kind of stuff. And so what I learned is after being in the music business, for a long period of time, I learned that there was a thread from the time I was little to the time now, because guess what? I ended up doing all the things that I loved to do as a kid, singing, writing, producing, directing choirs, all of those things I ended up doing to make a living. And I never had any other 
jobs outside of the music industry for, for the whole period of my career. So I wanted to say, you have to learn how to understand that what is for you is for you. When you come in, God has the plan. And if you have the wherewithal, some of us are fortunate to understand what it is we're supposed to do. And, and some people, I think it takes them longer, maybe, I don't know. But for me, it happened like a kid. I just knew I'd be a singer my whole life. I didn't know what that meant, but I just sang all the time. So, so, um, so my question to you um, is, when did you get your first big break? Wendy? How old were you? Um, I started singing at 16. I had my first gig with my own band. I was 16 in a club in Chicago. And prior to that, I was going to clubs and getting into contests for the money because my sister, my oldest sister would make me go and sign up for these contests and then she would take the money. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> but, they, but they would dress me up and, and I was like 13, 14, they would dress me up and take me into these clubs to sing. But when I met Red Fox, I was, um, I was about 18, 17, 18. And I was with a group called Diamonds, Rubies, and Pearls. And I was the lead singer. And we would open up for Red Fox. Now, now, all over. now Red Fox was also managing groups because he also managed a group of one of my uh, dear friends, um, Jerry Bell, um, as well. He was at, J really? Actually, I didn't Jerry know that. Bell from the he didn't manage us. Uh -huh. he, was, he was doing his comedy, correct? He definitely. But I guess he was kind of guiding us along because he was real particular about certain things. The girls could not have chip nail polish to this day. No, he would just, you know, be honest about certain things. So he was really kind of strict. And um, so I guess that's kind of management in that sense. Now, let me kick it over to you, Zorro. Now, um, Zorro, you are a preacher, as you just revealed to me, but also in the industry, they call you the minister of rules. So that means that you are a man that can really get things going and keep people in the groove. How did you get that uh, that nickname first off? I think because uh, groove was what I was always about. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I was always a fan of music before I was a drummer, and I was a fan of the groove, just the the feel of music. And, and uh, I grew up in Compton, California, and I grew up with nothing but great uh, music and so and I was attracted to music that just had a pocket a feel to it and so as I began to be a drummer I just gravitated towards just laying that backbeat down for people I enjoyed that of course I learned to play jazz and fusion and latin and all kinds of music and they give me solos and feature me in, in shows but I just love grooving I just love laying that I love serving the song I look at myself as a drummer pretty much as I look at myself as everything in my life I'm just merely a servant and if, I, and if I serve well, the king will elevate me. And so I've always tried to serve the song, serve the artist, serve the, the purpose or whoever's hiring me. Right. Uh, and, I, and I learned that if I do that well, that uh, you know, there's no way that God's gonna keep me low. I'm gonna keep getting elevated because as I continue to be servant heart oriented and make it, make it about the other people, then uh, naturally he elevates me. And the more he elevates me, the more I keep myself low. So that way I can continue. I look at it all as just the, the drumming, like, like Wendy said, like God's given everyone a gift. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he speaks to you in your heart and your voice. It's, it's in your own voice. Usually it's not like him, like in the Moses movie talking to you, but, but you're, you're hearing it in your own voice. And for me, I heard it when I was seven years old and I went to, I was taken to a concert to see Diana Ross and the Supremes and the Temptations. Mm -hmm. Now, in my house, Motown was king, and in my neighborhood, <laughs> um, the music was king. So when I went there at seven, I left the concert, and the next day, I made me a ghetto drum set. I just yeah. built together with, uh, with, we didn't have any money. I was raised by an immigrant mother from Mexico, seven brothers and sisters, no father. Uh, my father deserted me when I was uh, uh, six months. The only thing he left me uh, accidentally was a set of bongos. I have a picture of myself with, in my stroller at 18 months, and the only thing beneath me is my bongos. So you can say it was prophetic. It was my destiny. And, uh, but once I went to that concert, it's sort of, and I tell this to people when they're looking for their gifts, you know, it's like, it's, it's easy if you just think of it, what lights up your soul, what lights up your spirit. All I had to do was be by that rhythm, and then something in me like magnetic, like started winding up so i went the next day i got some tupperware canisters some salad spoons 
you know, a transistor radio and my little uh, red radio flyer wagon, drug it out to Compton Boulevard, turned it on to Wolfman Jack and started playing along to soul music just with the spoons in my hands in the middle of the street. Now, I didn't know I was going to be a drummer, but we are whatever we are already. Like, in other words, like Wendy was already a singer before she was born. The Lord already fashioned her to be a singer. Lord fashioned me to be a drummer. All we're doing is just discovering it in real time. But it was always there. Now, some people might not discover it till they're 20, till they're 30, till they're 40, till they're 70. But the gift that you have is already in you. That is and very true. That all you're doing covering it. You, you, you're, you're preaching, man. You're preaching. We're about to pass the collection for you. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> I got my Earthman and Fire collection plate from the, I got this uh, ashtray from Earthman and Fire, That's the Way of the World album. It's like a little, so I could just pass it around. That's the way of the world. And it's just <laughs> now, now I'm going to kick it to you, Wendy. Now I'm going to kick it to you, Wendy. Um, now you've been in the industry. Um, after you got your big break, where did your career go from there? It never stopped. So um, I was in college. I was studying um, music and theater at Vandercook College of Music and Kennedy King College in Chicago, which is where I'm from, the Windy City. There we go, Windy that's City. The Windy yeah, that's how it comes in. And, Cubs, Bears. And what happened is once I got with Red and then I came to LA, I came to, oh yeah, I came to LA to do The Wiz. So this was like back in 77. And I came out here to do The Wiz because all of my friends had gotten hired back in Chicago and I auditioned in Chicago, but I didn't get the gig. And then when I came to LA, I met my boyfriend's house and we have apartment here and all of the cast, he was in the, he had gotten hired to be one of the musical directors in the Wiz. So everybody's at our house for a party and I'm just sitting on the floor and he's playing piano and I start singing. I think it was my funny Valentine. I started singing that in the, then musical director heard me and said, wait a minute. Shh. And everybody said, wait a minute, hold on, Miss, Miss Thing can sing. And they got quiet. And I just sitting on the floor and I just kept singing. And then right when I got finished, uh, the musical director, Charlie, his name was Charlie. He said, um, I'd like for you to come in tomorrow and audition for Glenda and I am. Now remember, I already went through this and I'm thinking, I said, oh, okay. So the next morning I did go down and I got hired. And from there, you know, I toured with the National Touring Company for years as Glenda and Aunt M started off as a pit singer. So then from there, I got with Stevie because I went, I, Red Fox was living here and had a, a place of a La Brea and he knew I was in town. And so I'd gone to Hawaii. He calls me and said, can you come and sing for the Richard Pryor Burn Telethon? I came back to sing for that. And so when it was aired, Stevie Wonder heard it and announced on the um, television station that if anyone knew how to reach me to tell me that he was looking for me. So then that's how I got with Stevie. Now, now um, that's, that's quite awesome. colorful. And speaking of colorful, um, Zorro, you were speaking about your colorful life and looking at some of the accomplishments you've um, ascertained courtesy of the Lord, you've lived a colorful life. And as you were mentioning, very humble beginnings. But now after making it, uh, Zorro and drumming and you, know, and, and you see on your monitor, um, uh, his performance. I mean, this man is a bad drum. I've had some awesome. I saw drum. His drum. This man is incredible in what he does. Now, um, what was what is your inspiration? What keeps you inspired, uh, Zoro, even in the midst of all your accomplishments? Uh, just the fact that you know we're we're cre we're created to be productive. If 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 you wake up every day and you're bored, you don't have enough goals. You're not following the visions. Of, I believe God has created us with unlimited potential. So. Um, God's gift to me has been all the gifts that he's given me. He gave me the gift of a drummer, a speaker, a teacher, a writer, an encourager. So those are my gifts. That's when I come alive. My gift back to God and back to the world is to touch as many people as humanly possible with those gifts, with those platforms. So to me, I never tire of doing that. I, I only get revitalized and re-energized whenever I play, whenever I speak, whenever I teach. Those are the very things that are in the fiber of my being. So that's what keeps me going is like, my goal is to impact as many people as I can positively with all of those gifts and all those different forms and to really touch them so they can find God, so they can find their destiny, so they can find their purpose. Because I look at it like, if you're, if you're humble, then you make yourself accessible and people can reach you. But if you're prideful, you're like a street sign that says danger, rocks falling. 
no, no safe crossing here. But if you're humble, you're like a, you're, if you're a street sign that says safe crossing here, and then you allow other people to join you on the journey because, you know, God has blessed uh, Wendy and I in our professions. But at the end of our life, the Lord's going to go, you can't just go, hey, you know, I was a great drummer and I did all this and I did all that. No, don't you? He goes, yeah, yeah, sit down. I know all that was for free. But what did you do with it? In other words, whose life benefited from your gift? Whose life Amen. got better because I was alive? Very good. Very that's well said. Goal. And, that, and, that's, and that's, that segues into that's real. That's very real, real, very real and very insightful. And I'm going to hit you with that as well, um, Wendy. Just give me a minute. But let me ask you, uh, Zorro, now about your book, Soar, yeah. The Nine Ways to uh, Unlocking Your uh, Limitless Potential. Now, tell us a little bit about what we can look forward to in your book. Okay, so the book is something that the uh, Holy Spirit downloaded to me uh, over a period of a few years. I was literally woken up about three o'clock in the morning for a period of a few years, and I would write from like three to eight in the morning. Not that I wanted to, but that's the time the Lord was talking to me. You know, right yeah. when I'm sleeping, I'm like, really? You can do this anytime. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I uh, I had my laptop open and I wrote. So the the goal the 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 goal and the vision of the book was to teach people. I feel like we're here on this earth for three things. We are here to discover the gifts we have. We got to discover what we have. We are responsible to develop what we have for the purpose of deploying what we have. So we've got to discover it. We've got to develop it. And then we got to deploy it. We got to use it. And if you're not doing that, your life is very unfulfilled. But the Lord showed me there are very practical steps to doing this. And so there's nine life principles in the book. That, and I tell many stories of many other people. And so, you know, one of the principles would be, you know, something Wendy would agree with, you know, in Hollywood or whatever. One of the things that I learned was that you, principle number eight is B, the word B E, B, which is be the person that God created you to be. Find your voice, your song. I feel like God has created every one of us with a secret melody that is only ours. And only we can sing that melody, but that melody needs to be sung. The world needs that song, but it's up to us to discover that melody. And you do that by embracing the uniqueness of you because there's a thousand drummers and we can all play the same beat for, for an artist, but everyone's gonna play it slightly different. The important thing is like, you know, to, for Wendy to sing the way Wendy sings, for Zorro to play the drums the way I play, because nobody can be a better you than you. And, and what you need to do is, is hang on to that part of you that makes you uniquely special. Instead of looking, we all emulate people as we're developing. That's part of your development. But eventually you find you. And eventually I had to find what is my sound? What is my vibe? What is, who am I? And you embrace that. And then that's the unique part that makes you different. It stands apart because God only made one of us. And so that's, that's really kind of how I roll is just find that voice. And that's what the book is about is teaching people. And it, I, I'm, I'm teaching as a class right now online on Zoom as a four week study. And I'm in the fourth week coming up, but I've literally had 10 year olds and 85 year olds all being super inspired because what I realized that the gift that God gave me drumming and speaking and teaching and writing are really under the umbrella of communication. So he made me a communicator and those are just the ways I communicate. But what I am in the spirit is I'm like a Barnabas. I'm like a Paul. I'm an encourager and I am a teacher. And so that's going to come out in the drumming. It's going to come out in the writing. It's going to come out in the speaking. It's going to come out in the TV interviews because it's what I'm supposed to do. So all, so the book was really, it's touched and blessed a lot of people because I write in a way that's very uh, simplistic and it's not overly theological. It's just practical, got practical wisdom. Jesus always told stories that people could understand that right away when they walked away, there were parables that made sense to them because they were spoken in a language that was, you know, it wasn't like theological. It was, a, this is the kingdom of God is like this. And then he would tell you a story of what the kingdom of God was like. And you go, oh, okay. So I tell, I tell things in a very simplistic way by sharing parts of my story, but parts of other, many other people's stories. And I use lots of quotes and scriptures. But anyway, I, I, I never even studied to become a writer. But when I was 11 years old, we moved from Compton, which was like Sanford and Son with Red Fox, where I lived, it was like where, like Red Fox on you know Sanford and Son, and then we moved to Oregon, which was total you know uh, uh, Whiteville, like the country, like the Waltons and Little House on the Prairie. So it was a life culture shock. How were you able to make the adjustment? 
uh, by God's grace, man, because it was not easy with a Mexican mother. They didn't really like us there. Mm. And uh, and anyway, but uh, we had a strong family, seven brothers and sisters. We were a strong unit. But when I was little in Oregon, I wanted to write. Uh, I wanted to go camping really bad, but we couldn't afford to send me camping. So I was a very imaginative dreamer like kid so i began to write a book about camping even though i'd never been camping <laughs> so i just started writing and studying and i was going to write the world's greatest camping book but i realized that the book never came out but i realized that so that was god already planting the seed of a writer in me exactly i, I didn't know that later i would write books that would touch people's hearts and change their life and get them on a the path but it's like wendy said you know when she was young, you know, it's like she started singing that too. It's like, it's already in you and you just begin to explore it. But it takes, it takes courage. It takes faith. It takes uh, some tenacity and some work to turn her gift of what it was at two to what it became, you know, because that's the exactly, work, that's the work exactly. Part. Now, now, Wendy, um, and very, very uh, heartfelt on what you're saying, Zorro. I'm glad so many people yes. uh, tune in and hear this because um, you're hitting a home and the materialistic stuff will fade away. But what you did in this short life you live in is exactly what God is looking for. And he's going to ask you that. Yeah. He's going to ask you because the rest is fading away. And your talent, you know, you need to pass it on to someone else so that they can be able to learn and be a blessing to others. Um, now, in regards to you, um, Wendy, now at the peak of your success, and I know you're still working hard um, and doing great things because you're still a young woman. Now, um, you have a business as well. You have a company that helps empower and educate people. Let's talk a little bit about your business and company that you do. It's a very new um, nonprofit organization called Windy City Entertainment. Um, under that uh, umbrella, there's um, something that's very dear to my heart called the Shy Project, which is the Chicago Honor Initiative. As it was brought to my attention a while back that there was so many killings um, gang related in Chicago. And I mean, there's like over 3,000 shootings that have taken place already and the year is not even over. Um, there's been over 500 and something of those killings um, resulted in death, of those shootings resulting in death. So I had started looking into it and found out that they don't have any hope for it. The people there are very afraid to even walk out of the doors in Chicago. It has escalated. It is, um, they're in a state of emergency. And when we talk about Black Lives Matter, because I was one of those people on the street, Black Lives Matter. And some of my friends from Chicago noticed and said, well, do you notice what's going on here in Chicago? And I said, well, not really, let me take a look. And when I did look at it, I did realize that it's, it's very bad. So we're raising money to help put an end to gang violence through a project we have coming up called the Gang Symposium. I don't think it's ever been done. And we're bringing together offenders, we're bringing together families, we're bringing together leaders, um, even some of those that are incarcerated who were street leaders who have been incarcerated for um, Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover. They've been in, they're in jail in Colorado, high security, but they will never probably get out. And that's one of the problems because when those gang leaders were taken off the street, the other gang members just started all these different sects. And then now they're just killing for no reason other than retaliation or to feel like they are moving up the ranks. It's very layered. So we're trying to do what we can, looking in from the outside, but that's my hometown and I'm very passionate about it. So we're gonna do something about it. We're gonna make a difference. Now, now how can someone how can someone be a part of your cause? How can they, they can go life? to our website, which is windycityentertainment.net, you know, spelled just like the words, no fancy spelling there, windycityentertainment.net. And they can look look at the Shy Project and see what it is that we're doing as ways that they can donate or be a part. They can contact me. That's a beautiful thing you're doing. Um, our city really needs that. Um, a lot of people talk a lot of stuff, but to make Are you from to, Chicago? You remember I told you, yes, I was born in South Shore. You did, right. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Absolutely. So, and I went to, uh, I went to Mount Carmel High School and went to St. Felicitas Grammar School and so on and so forth. So believe okay. you me, um, my book, my, I believe Chicago. I believe Chicago. Okay. Now, um, Zorro, I'm kicking it off to you. Um, now, let me mention really quick, we're doing a station identification. We are speaking to um, Zorro, 
Zorro, the guy that can cut you up on the drums and preach the gospel <laughs> at the same time, as well as uh, Miss Wendy Barnes, who can sing like nobody else. And you're going to hear that beautiful voice in a moment. But also, she is a humble young lady who's done big things and still looking to do more to benefit others. Azoro, tell me, what are the three things, really quickly, that you've learned being in the industry for as many years you've been? Oh, there's more than three, but I, there's there's a lot. Uh, everyone is always trying to get in the industry, and they're always asking, you know, what's the you know, what's the greatest marketing trick? How do I, you know, and I always say the best marketing strategy of all that I've learned in the industry is to just be excellent at what you do. If you do what you do and it's so stinking awesome, other people are going to tell people about you. So the, the whole point is I've learned to be excellent at your craft, to just be second to none, do the best you can do. Always go on and above what people ask for. Anything people have ever hired me to do, I'm there early. I know the music. I'm going to go the extra mile. You never have to ask. I'm always going to give you more than my my thing is. I, I learned the the goal is to be uh, to be a burden and not a blessing. I mean, to be a blessing and not a burden. Uh, in other words, like my goal is to make the artist. If I endorse somebody, I want you to have prospered more because you got me than even what you paid me to do. And then um, the other thing is to stay true to yourself. Don't lose your soul in all of this. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, accomplishments and accolades are fine and everything. But at the end of the day, you're a human being with, with a soul and a spirit. You will stand before the Lord. So re remain true to who, you, to who you are and don't let the industry, all the disappointments or even the successes, don't let it change. Don't let it change your heart because in the end, that's the only thing that's going to really matter. Very, very good. And what about you, Wendy? What are the three things really quickly you've learned being in the industry? Well, it's just really the same thing he said. Learn your craft. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you can have a gift, you have to study it because that's your reputation. And your reputation means everything. And musicians don't respect you if you don't even know your key of your song you're singing <laughs> in. You know, and things like that. If you can't direct that band, then you don't know your music. And... Um, don't be bullied by anybody. Don't do anything that you don't want to do because if you listen to your spirit inside of you, it will let you know because you can say, hey, I want to get a shot. Yeah, you may get that shot, but you will lose your dignity and self-respect. So just be careful out here. That's two. And what's the last one? And the last one is just um, be true to yourself. Know who you are. And, you know, like I used to say, well, I developed as I went along like a fine wine. I got better with time. I had to figure out what was comfortable for me. How, what was my persona? Who am I? And I always knew who I was, but it developed. It got, I became more confident as time went on. Very good, very uh -huh. good. Now, now we like to have fun here on the Sherrard Show. We like to be able to um, do a lot of things spontaneous, keeping it in the nature of fun, <laughs> loving and clean. So um, but I wanna, um, I always have my guests do a cappella to be able to sing something of their favorite song um, that can bring it on home. But before we do that, um, Zora, I'll start with you. Where can your where can people um, keep up with you on social media? I I am Z O R O Zoro with one R Zoro the drummer, uh, three separate words. Zoro the drummer on Instagram, Zoro the drummer on Facebook. Uh, so it's pretty much Zoro the drummer. And then my website is Zoro the drummer .com. I also have a ministry which is Zorro Ministries. So Z-O-R-O -O Ministries spelt out, zoroministries.org. Uh, but my ministry website can also be reached through my Zorro the Drummer website. And it's the last tab on there. It says ministry. So that's how you can find me, Z-O-R-O -O, Zorro the Drummer. Now, Zorro, um, we didn't mention about your, the, we did uh, speak briefly about it, but the book, The Big Gig, that book can be purchased uh, where? But the big gigs on Amazon, uh, used, it used to be in all the Barnes and Nobles and guitar centers and all that. It's a, it's a 440 page motivational book on how to live out your dream as a musician. And it originally started off as an article I, in the eighties. I was uh, the drummer with the new edition uh, back in their heyday when they had all the hits, telephone man, candy girl, all that stuff. Anyway. Uh, and I wrote an article in one of the uh, teen magazines, I think it was right on or Blackbeat or fresh or one of those. And the article was Zorro's show business tips. And it turned out to be like a three-page article or four-page article on just sort of my 
advice as people wanted to come. So that little four page thing turned into a 440 page book like 30 years later. It was the framework. So it's it's out there, they can get it on Amazon. My book Soar, you can get that through just by emailing me through the website because it used to be on, on, on Amazon, but I, I took it off there. But so now I just sell it myself individually. And when I speak at churches and conferences and different things, Very um, good. So that's how you do it. Very good. And what about you, Wendy? Where can What are your social media handles for new fans, people watching the show for the first time? Okay, wendybarnes.com is my website. W-I-N-D-Y, like the Windy City, <laughs> wendybarnes.com. And from there, you can find out everything else. You know, I really think it's cool um, that your your name is spelled Wendy like the wind. That's cool. And especially coming from Chicago. So I'm like, that's a stage <laughs> name. That was pretty cool to see that. All right. So Zoro, you're not off the hook. Uh, Wendy, nor are you. So don't try. <laughs> now, um, yeah, you don't have the Apollo hook on me pulling me off the show. <laughs> <laughs> so Zoro, we know you're a master poet, a drummer. But now we want you to sing something now. Uh, oh, God. Old one of your favorite songs, even if you want to sing, yes, Jesus, <laughs> even if you want to sing that, it's up to you. I'm going to bless you by not singing because that's a better blessing than by singing. <laughs> but I mean, because uh, Wendy is the singer. I'm a drummer and God did not give me with the beautiful singing. You're going to give me a beat. But I, I can give you a groove, Cindy. I can, you, give you, me a groove. Wendy, give yeah, her a groove. Can, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I, thank you. I want to thank what, you for, for having us on the show. Thank yeah. you oh, so very much. welcome. We're so glad to have you all on the show. You made my Sunday. It's a treat. It was a treat. Appreciate the so, song. Wendy, what what's, your favorite song? what's your favorite song, Wendy? Or do you have something? Oh, you like? God, don't, don't even ask me that. I, but. There's millions, right? God has smiled on me. Oh, wow. There we go. There we he go. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Oh, mercy. I love that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. beautiful. Well, um, I want to first of all thank you all for being uh, blessing me to be on Sherrard's show today. We're talking about Zorro. This is an iconic individual who is a minister of the gospel. And you can see why just hearing his words of wisdom just on for 30 minutes will make you say, let me buy that book and let me learn more about this individual, Zorro. Thank you so much for stopping by the show. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be here. I thank you, Sherrard, for having me. I thank my friend Avis Harrell for recommending me to your show. I thank yes. Wendy for just, uh, uh, lighting me up with her singing. Wendy, if I could have sang, I would have sang like Keep Your Head to the Sky by Earth, Wind, and Fire, and I would have had you do the Philip Bailey part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> I have to remember, it's not too much singing going on. And trying to sing. That's all right. That's all right. See, yeah, you, you can carry a tune. I appreciate oh. that, <laughs> Wendy. Uh, I try. Wendy, yes, thank sir. you so much for being on the Sherrard Show. My, my shy town contact. Um, you're doing great things. It's just great. The whole point of the Sherrard Show is giving you, you your flowers while you're still living. So I hope you appreciate yes. that as much as I appreciate you being on the show. And for you That's all perfect. out here, um, we are broadcasting on um, this episode. We'll be airing on Comcast NBC, as well as iHeartRadio, as well as Spotify and Anchor. You don't want to miss it, um, this episode. And I hope you've learned something from these stellar individuals that have stopped by the show took some notes so that you can be even halfway as successful as they have as long as you keep the Lord first. I'm Sherrard. We will see you next week. We have a couple very special guests coming in next week. You don't want to miss it. In the meantime, stay blessed and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye.